other bands were directed towards mid lane, and they really wanted to get him, you know, fed and get him going. And I want to see if Morden uh, will end up going the same route here. But we do see Thresh actually has the last band out of Offset World, which is kind of surprising to me because Steel yeah, is just so pick. damn good. Yeah, and they have first pick as well. I mean, I could definitely see Thresh being a first pick. Um, I agree with all the bands that came out of uh, Furious Gaming. I mean, they banned Elise, Cast, and all top priorities. And also, uh, Morden, he was really well known for his Moon and Elise jungle back when he played with uh, Giants Gaming. Or, sorry, o Ozone Giants. Okay, wow. that was the fastest. Back then. That was like insta -log. It was the fastest I've ever seen champions pick. They go right for the Shyvana buy. Um, Shyvana just overall really safe top laner. She doesn't really have any counter picks, so really safe pick. And then, of course, Vi, once you're level six, it's just free kills all day. Um, but I think Kale's a really good counter pick against Vi, because what happens is, is Vi is going to go into your team, just going to ult somebody, and then everybody's going to try to focus that target. And guess what? They get Kale ulted. And uh, you're probably going to be by in the middle of five people dying. Um, and then Renekton is also a pretty safe pick against Shyvana. That's a matchup early if he goes more of a damage oriented build, like a Hydra. He's going to go for more of that tank build for his team. Uh, he's probably going to have to since they have a kill, unless they pick up a really tanky jungler right now. And JWoww, he's also. He's been crowned as one of the best top laners in Europe, and Renekton, Kazix, like these are all champions that can really play extremely well in the top lane. And. I mean, it's like it's like if you if you think of Young Buck, you think of Renekton in your in your ULCS, and it's pretty much the same with him. But we do see looks like Lulu and Caitlyn picked up here, and that's that like kind a, of synergizes with the whole comp they're already going for. Yeah, they got this really fast push Lulu Kate that they're going to bring in. Uh, I think they want to poke out the Annie. I really like Lulu against Annie, especially with Caitlyn, because you can poke her out, and she just basically gets two chunk before she can actually hard engage on you. And then even once you're at level six, you have two shields. You have the the ultimate with Lulu, which is going to give you a ton of health, mm -hmm. and then you also have the shield on her uh, on her E. So. It's going to be really hard for that, that lane to, to combo the, the Lulu Kate. And then the early game, they're just going to push them in all day. Wow, we see Lisa actually being hovered over, but Jinx has been locked in for hate out here, so they're going to have a Jinx Annie lane up against this Lulu and Caitlyn. Another combo you can do with the Lulu Vi that's really cool is you can just send Vi and do the ultimate, grab somebody, and then you just Lulu knocked them up. So they have pretty good in game. The Orion is still available. And that kind of worries me because if you use Vi, you pull them all together with the ball, you knock them all right back off the Lulu, that'd be such a strong combo. Well, obviously, MF is just better for that combo. I mean, come on, you, you make it rain, you strut. <laughs> I was thinking of make it rain, and they need to make like a, a lottery misfortune where, the, where it actually rains money when you do make it rain. Okay, that'd be pretty Something awesome. Like that. But at least it has been picked up as the jungler uh, for us that world. We're going to see more on that. I, th I think it'll be an Oriana pick. I honestly feel like it's gonna, uh, That's the only reason they would ban that, that Gragas. Oh, Gragas is also a very good champion against Nidalee. And one of the things that's pretty good against Kale is poke uh, in the late game. But I'm not sure how that really fits their team comp together. They have like this poke, they have a pretty solid front line, kind of weird engage. And I, I don't. I guess they can use the Lulu for disengage. So I guess this, this is more of a siege comp that they have. Um, I don't think they're going to be like forcing anything around Dragon or anything around Baron. They're just going to be looking to poke and uh, siege turrets. Um, but Kale kind of bullies Nidalee in lane one through six, uh, just because her harass is so strong and her pushing ability is so strong. And Nidalee has a, a lot of trouble last hitting under the turret since she doesn't really have any spells to last hit with. Like, what are you going to spear a minion to get the get the creep? <laughs> Uh, so I think the Kale is going to be pushing that Nidalee in all day, and the, I'm wondering if the Lee Sin will be able to, to pressure the lanes with a roaming Kale off of that. Well, we're going to find out here as this game is going to get underway in just a second, but as we you know, think about the early game, the late game, you know, what kind of composition does also World have compared to Furious Gaming? Because that camera angle is terrible, I'm just going to yeah. say off the bat. <laughs> I don't know why it's actually angled like that, but I mean, also, well, if you think about it, what kind of composition are they going for? Like, what are they uh, I mean, people, in this game? People do different things with Kale. Is sometimes the user is a split pusher, mm -hmm. uh, and they do like the 4-1 split, because Kale late game, she's pretty hard to deal with. It's like, oh, I'm invincible, and I can two-shot you. Like, what are you going to do about that? So they might use her as a split pusher, or they might just try to force team fights. I mean, they have a pretty decent team fight team. They have Annie for engage. They have this huge Renekton tank line, plus Lee Sin that's going to be able to, to either peel for Jinx or to maybe get uh, some insect type initiates. So um, I think they have a very versatile comp, and I think they have better control over Dragon and Baron and, and things like that. And I think if this goes late game and they can make it through like that pokey siege kind of scenario that Furious could put out, then I definitely give Dossal a world. All right, we're getting underway with this game here in just a second. They have loaded into the lobby. And what about level one? Do you think we're going to see anything happen there off the bat? I mean, going after Lee Sin's jungle early on doesn't really do too much. He's a very versatile jungle. And even if you put him behind, he's still going to be fine. And same thing with Vi. Vi can start both red and blue buffs. So I don't think you're going to see any type of evades. Maybe see like the line of scrimmage thing. All right, well, we did see yesterday uh, 
pretty much every single team minus one game. I can't think. I think it was maybe Isris. Isris versus Pain yeah. when they invaded on the Maokai. But yeah. I mean, Maokai is just screaming, like, please, <laughs> please gank my blue. Come here, gank my blue. Well, they did end up going for that one. But that was the only invade that we actually saw happen uh, in day number one here in Touch Too Much with Sao Paulo. And that is how damn loud the crowd is. I guarantee you can hear that through the mics. Yeah, they seem pretty amped up in this early in the morning, even though it's not that early. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I want to touch on Morden on the least sin because he typically played like Mundo or Elise back in, in the spring split. And we saw RNA playing uh, Lee Sin yesterday uh, in, their, in their games, and RNA just punished so much. He, he, he took his own jungle, then he just counter jungled pretty much the entire time until they wanted to start going for fights where he would just kind of flow into a, a natural order. But then again, who's against like a Nunu? So it's a yeah. little bit different. Though. I mean, it's kind of hard to even counter jungle a Nunu, but I don't think that the Lee Sin will be able to pressure the buy that much. It really depends on the buy player. Uh, Lee Sin can put a lot of trouble on just about any jungler in the game. Because a lot of a lot of times like that buy will use her abilities on a on a camp and Lee Sin shows up and he hits you with all of his abilities. You can't really fight back. And then on top of that, that Nidalee is gonna be pressured in for the first six levels of the game. So she's not gonna be able to come help. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Lee Sin, Lee Sin doing some counter jungle. Well, here we go. Minion's about to spawn it looks like we're gonna have him start up towards his red buff and Morden Looking like he still wants to come for some sort of invade, but he'll be starting out his blue, so we're going to have both jungers starting towards the top side of the map and heading down. And you talked about middle, and you talked about top a little bit. I want you to go a little bit more in depth on that really quickly, because you said that if the you know, JWoww builds kind of a, uh, a Hydra, we could see more damage coming in. Yeah, it looks like the Annie and the Jinx, though, are going down and checking to see if that blue. They wanted to harass the Viat blue, so they're not going to really get that. But on the note about the Hydra, um, it's kind of a riskier build because you're a lot more, you can potentially be ganked a lot easier. But it gives you the chance to win the lane versus Shyvana, and not very many champions can say that. So I'm interested if he goes for the typical Sunfire build, where they're just going to both safely farm out the lane, or if he's going to go for the, the little bit riskier build and go with the Hydra, where he can potentially win that lane outright. All right, and then bottom lane, you touched on it a little bit earlier on, talking about <clears throat> the Lulu Caitlyn being able to poke at Annie before he can even get in there uh, to do any sort of harass. And you're kind of seeing that already come to light here, as Dio just taking a lot of damage, and he's looking for that stun, but he's not really trading any damage. I mean, if anything, also is losing this right now. Yeah, Annie's already at half health. Um, I mean, she's going to chug her potion. She has Doran Shield to heal her up. So when you have your AD carry already at half health, hard level to engage that Annie's love to get. Um, I think Lulu is one of the best counters to Annie in lane. It's not really a counter, but it's a very safe thing. It basically makes it where the Annie can't do anything at any point in the game. And of course, her auto attacks, because of her passive, does an insane amount of damage just through the poke. You basically glitter lance them, and you can get three auto attacks. And... Annie can't really do much unless she blows her stun on that. And right now, it just seems like All Star World are just trying to shove the lane in a little bit here. I mean, they realize the lane's already pushing, and we're going to see the junglers going for a little bit of counter jungling here. Morden going to be pushing in. He's actually going to be seeing them right there, right in front of his face. He's going to land the Q, but he's not going to go for the engage on that. But both junglers are still sticking around. They, they want to fight over this Wraith camp. Yeah, I don't think the Vi should be trying to contest this Wraith camp. There's almost no point to this. Um, she could go down and run to her white camp, or she go up to double golems. Uh, I don't think she'll be able to win this trade outright with the Lee Sin unless he messes up. Oh, wow. That's a lot of damage <laughs> okay. already going for him right there. And he's forced to run away with the help of that ward. And then won't be able to take that Wraith. So wins that little bit of a trade right there. And Morden, he's, he's not necessarily done just yet. He still wants to go in for something. But in the meantime, top lane, both top players extremely low. JWoww has used his Ignite, but Accelerator hasn't. Yeah, that was really strange that the Lee Sin kept fighting that out once the Vi's abilities were up. I thought he was going to wait until Vi went in and started doing the camp a little bit more, and then he could make her waste her abilities, and then he could get all the harass he wanted. And he also didn't really have a clear line of sight on his on his uh, Q either. Oh, and then he was coming in for a kick on a JWoww, but he kind of just expected over in the bottom side of the map, though. We do see Caitlyn already low. And he's forced to just completely back away. Has the barrier still available right there. And I'm not sure what exactly happened, but I'm assuming that was almost an all-in. Yeah, you know, they uh, yeah, they tried to do an all-in on the Caitlyn. Um, remember, Annie's stun got shortened a little bit on the uh, for the for the first six levels. Oh, uh, they ignite. He's taking out JWoww, and you see that cast minion one last hit. They get the first blood onto Accelerator top lane, and that is not a good start. Yeah, I feel like it's a pretty big mistake out of the Renekton to lose that outright. He must have traded. Well, um, the only way I could ever connect a good matchup. If you want to do that matchup right, you just have to kind of poke her down and use the fact that you have a little bit of sustain on Renekton to wear her down. But I think he just tried to straight out fight her and he got a little bit greedy. Well, he's still ahead by one CS right now, but obviously he is down that uh, first kill. He actually went for a Dorn's Blade right there. Yeah. And a Giant Spell for Accelerator. Yeah, it looks like he just wants to try to scrap that lane out. Um, maybe Dorn's Blade is an okay pickup, and that's kind of a sign that he might want to go for 
maybe the Sunfire build because he gets that Dorn just for a little bit of extra AD. I don't think he's going to be able to go for the Hydra anymore, though. If he does, the, the Shivana already has a little bit of an edge on him, and I think that she can punish him now. All right, we're going to see the return towards the lane on the top side. So we had also World, they're winning, uh, winning out bottom lane. That 34 to 23 CS lead, which is honestly quite big at this stage in the game right now, and that's kind of a worrying sign for me uh, for Fierce Gaming. Oh, yeah, it's mo mostly because of that all-in. Um, Caitlyn had to go back and buy. Uh, she was chunked down to, like, one bar of hell. So I don't think you're going to be standing around the lane with the Jinx that can hit you with any of her little uh, cork shot abilities or Annie that could potentially engage on you. She still has flash-up, so she could have flashed under and killed her. But luckily, they ended up getting out of that fight earlier. Yeah, do you see Bojang is still just committing to their own side, not really being too active in the, in the lanes just yet. We saw Nim you know, go for a gank top lane. We saw Morden try to go for a bit of counter jungling, but he was obviously uh, pushed out of lane right away or pushed out of the jungle right away. But it looks like he's heading down towards the bottom side. And with this Warden tribal, she might be able to make this gank happen. Yeah, I wonder if he's going to go through the river, though. He's probably going to get spotted by that ward, though, and they'll back off before they, he even gets in a position for it. Uh, I was going to say, or will they? Because they were standing around for a little <laughs> bit right there, but they do, in fact, back away. So he should know that he hasn't been spotted, but he's still committing towards there right now. Yeah, I think they're just going to Safe. They know they're there. Now, you know what's really interesting? For me, in the Nidalee have very similar CS right now. Um, usually, what you want to do with Kale is you just want to push that Nidalee in and make her miss CS under the turret. And I don't think that he played the, ma the matchup like that. Yeah, it feels like he's been playing passive. Like I've, I've seen him show about the lane a couple times, and he just backs off to his own turret. He doesn't want to get ganked. He doesn't really have any wards out at the moment, or well, now he finally has the ability to put something down. But he d has been given a, you know, a nice ward over towards Wraith Camp um, by Morden, so he has that, that vision, but still playing a little bit safe. And that's kind of, I don't know, to me, that's also that style, where he needs the jungle to kind of help him out. But there it is. There's the flash. There's the stun coming on 1984. He's actually forced to flash, forced to barrier. And now Tor uh, Tomex, he's in trouble here, but he does have flash to escape. And that is also a world kind of just stamping their mark on that bottom lane. Yeah, so much damage going out on that Caitlyn. Um, but luckily, the Lula's there. She has her shields, and she's able to save them. So I don't think that they're still going to even be able to die with the barrier down. Well, if anything, JWoww has been able to force the ultimate out of Accelerator. They're forcing him to, to run away, and he's able to kind of make his mark on the lane. I mean, he's down a kill, but he's actually going to be ahead in CS right now. Yeah, level 6 or Necton, once you hit that, it's just really hard to all-in trade him, especially if you have a free play piled up where you can lifesteal off of. So I think the, he probably got traded when the Shyvana's burnout was down, and the Renekton just took advantage of that. And we are going to see him really hit level 6, though, so we'll uh, uh, finally have, have that build. What do you see already going so far? We have that... Throw me off, but we already have... Some... ...for cape coming out of Accelerator. We have... We have that Chalice and to the Athenes... ...Holy Grove coming out of Italy right now. And... ...the AD carry is being very... ...calm with their builds right now. Not really showing anything just... Yeah, it's actually... ...the Caitlyn level Doran's build... <laughs> Keshi doesn't want to get instantly killed by the anti-jinx combo. They can actually put out a ton of damage once they hit level 6. Um, so I guess he's going to be playing on the little bit safer side. Same thing with Lulu. She's opting to rush the, the side stone rather than getting a Gulbert 10 item. So they just b both want to stack health so they don't get instantly popped in that lane. And then the Nidalee, of course, Nidalee always goes for an Athenes if she's against the magic damage dealer. Because if you get a blue buff, you're approaching almost max CDR, which is going to allow you to lock off Spirit all day without ever running out of mana. Renekton in the top, uh, I think probably because they end up losing that first exchange and they need a tank for their team. Um, so you're just going to see pretty much just two Sunfire tanks just farming top now. I don't think that there's going to be any risk of either one dying unless the jungle is called. And what's your thought on Morden? Because he's been quite calm throughout most of this game. He has approached level 6 finally, but he does have boots and ability as his first buy. And we saw Arne do the same thing uh, earlier on. And now bottom lane, you're seeing Nim get so low. He actually went for a ganger, though. They do trade one for one, but with Morden coming up to the side, Tomex, he's not going to be able to escape this one, but the trap does stop Hado. They don't really even know who to go for, but Tomex solo, he's going to go down from the kick. And that is a two for one trade in favor of Ocelot World. Yeah, I'm really surprised that it turned out like that. The Lee Sin came in a little bit late, but uh, I guess Haydal and, and uh, Dia, uh, they kept their cool and just ended up trading them back. They instantly popped that by when she came in to gank on them. And they even used the ultimate out of her as well, so it's not like he's level 5 when he went in for the gank. It was a, a straight out attempt, and 
And Tasha dropped by them to turn that around. And also, they have a huge CS lead down there in bottom lane. And now with that kill, we're seeing Haydal sitting on 1,800 gold to spend. Yeah, you're going to have a late game jinx. And uh, that's not exactly something you want to go against, especially if you watch the ULCS. Uh, Reckles in that champion, he just single-handedly carries a game on that champion. She's so brutal late game. And Accelerate, he's still sticking around. We do have JY going in. The Knights are traded here. Accelerate getting very low. He doesn't have a way to escape. He does have Flash. He does have Ignite. He I, does can't, I can't tell if, it, if the Shivana was trying to bait him there or he just was being lazy on his backing. I, I couldn't tell. It looked like it had been either one. And I was actually wondering that as well. I, it just kind of seemed a little bit odd when JL is just running into you and you just sit there not caring. Maybe he's trying to juke them out thinking that Nim was there, but as, obviously as we can see, he was nowhere in that vicinity. <laughs> Uh, you know what I'm really surprised about is the Lee Sin. He's, he's only ganked two times for the most part in this entire game, and he opted for the Boots of Mobility rush. So if you rush Boots of Mobility, that means you're going to put a lot of early game pressure on the map. And uh, outside of that one counter gank on bottom, I haven't seen too much of it. And also one thing that Fierce is doing really well is, is the wards into their own jungle. I mean, they're spotting warded every time he tries to cross the river minus the top side, and he's not able to get any counter jungle he's maybe looking for or hoping to get somewhat. He's heading down towards the bottom side. Damn, he's so fast. <laughs> Ability. Yeah, he's looking for another game. That. I'm not sure he's going to be able to do anything off of that. Also, the lane is a little bit pushed in, too. So, I think... I don't think they're going to be able to do anything. Oh, we do see the anti sun straight on Atomics right there. He is level 6. He will have his ultimate available. He doesn't have any way to escape, but Hado actually going for the flash. I'm not sure if I really agree with that, but we do see Kayla with a nice 90 caliber net tops him over that trap. But you did see Morden. Just off the side of your screen, going in for the tribe, was trying to make that gank happen. Yeah, and just lurking in the brushes. I mean, I think if they got a little bit lower health, then yeah, they would have definitely made, tried to make a play under the turret for that. But they're a little bit too high on health, so I don't think he's going to risk going for that dive. Well, and Morden getting back to first team. Oh, unfortunately, misses the Q, but he still does safeguard to that war. Trying to go for that pick on Anili. His ultimate is back available here. And we've already seen the damage pissed. from those spears. He doesn't really have any AP, but he just chugged Ocelot down right there. And now D would get knocked out about half health. Hado getting slowed up here. We might even see Nim going for the engage. The ultimate coming out of Caitlyn does get blocked by Morden, though. And Nim is just so close. He wants to make the engage happen. Look at Hado's health. And Nidalee's just, just those... pushing the entire team back by herself. It's it's ridiculous. She chunked Ocelot down to half health with one spear, and then hits another one on Jinx, and they're going to get free dragon off of this. Like, there's no way that they can contest this. They're all too chunked out. Lee Sin might be able to go for a steal, but that's the only way I can see them getting this. And considering what, would ju what just happened right before this uh, little bit of engage, uh, you know, occurred is that Tomex 1984, they got pressured. They got shoved out really far. They're helped like that before the fight even happened in the middle before that dragon was even taken and damn that Nidalee yeah they have Nidalee heal as well though I mean even if you do get chunked out you have a level 9 Nidalee she probably has two points in heal uh, you can actually top people off pretty pretty well with that and on top of that I just noticed that Ocelot didn't build, get any MR on his runes he has no MR on his blues so he only has 30 MR so those spears are doing an insane amount of damage right now um, I think if he had a little bit more MR he could have maybe stayed in that fight longer in the meantime, we do see the first turn of the game does go down in towards that top side in favor of Offset World and Morden. Maybe jumping the guy just a little bit right there, trying to go for that red buff. He doesn't have one to back up. Look at the damage off of those spears! That is just ridiculous. Yeah. And Morden's only sitting on 43 MR right now. Yeah, Lisa looked a little ballsy there. He's like, yeah, I'll fight you for your red. And he's like, oh god, never mind. No more. <laughs> All it takes is just one spear. And I feel like we're just saying, ooh, quite a bit today, uh, at least throughout this game. But that Nilly, it's, it's doing. A fantastic job. And you were talking about earlier on maybe being shoved into the turret, but he's keeping up in CS. He's only down about 10 right now. Yeah, he's only 10 behind, and most of that comes from actually the time he spent getting that dragon um, and also going to contest his, his own red. Uh, I think if this goes to the mid game, they start sieging with that team comp they have, this could be really bad for Oslo World. And as a jungler, I mean, you know all about how all the lanes work, you know, and what you need to protect. And one thing that I remember seeing SK do extremely well against Evil Geniuses back at Gamescom 2012 was control blue. And we haven't seen any of that happen just yet for us at World. Yeah, it doesn't really look like any of that. I mean, earlier, the Lee Sin, when he went to go do that gank on bottom lane, he looked like he was checking for the blue, or maybe he won a reward for it. But uh, it looks like his timing was just a little bit off. And the thing is, they also knew that uh, Nim started at red because we had Dio walk in there and check that blue buff too, so... Maybe a bit of miscommunication, maybe a little bit of nerves. Maybe just waking up or, or, or something like that. But in the meantime, as well, I mean, fourth battle, they have very similar items. If anything, j -Well has the advantage with that Doran's Blade, but he's not winning these trades. Yeah, he still has his ultimate up, though, so I don't think he's too scared. And uh, I don't think he'll be able to be dove unless this Kale comes out. And yeah, he's going to get spotted on that ward, though, so I, I don't think he's going to be able to go over that. Shivana knows what's up. Uh, she's going to back off, uh, since she doesn't have a tower to fall back to. 
I, I do like this, though, about Ocelot. He's starting to roam around a bit. He didn't really do too much of that uh, back, I remember thinking about him in the, you know, LCS splits, but he wants to get kind of fed on, on Kale, it seems. I mean, he has, he has good farm right now, only being 14 minutes in, but I think he realizes that if he gets a couple of items that he can really be a force to reckon with when already his bot lane is doing extremely well. Yeah, this is one of the advantages of Kale. Um, she's able to almost instantly push the wave up. Uh, she does so much damage to the wave, and uh, she can just get so many roam, roam opportunities off that. But of course, Nidalee is also a really good roaming champion. She can follow up, she has so much mobility, um, and she can just be there following that Kale, and she clears out the wave pretty easily as well if the Kale's not there pressuring her with her cougar farm. And that bot lane is behind so much CRS right now. They're behind 40, but I guess he has a little bit of drag gold to go with, so he's not too, too far behind. He's about a thousand gold behind, but uh, uh yeah. Uh, that, that bot lane is just getting murdered right now. To right there to fade out Andy. Oh, Black gonna come out, but he's gonna dodge with the plus. Turn around with the ultimate himself. They're gonna try to chase this back down. But right now, I don't really think that Fierce Gaming has the damage they need because with Hayda with that Bloodthirst, he's gonna be able to sustain this and mourn. And he was even heading down from middle. But we can see both Chunglers are kind of grouping up towards this middle lane and trying to stop or trying to at least counter each other. Yeah, bottom line, like all their abilities are out, so I guess it's gonna go back to farming right now. Um, the Caitlyn, she, I mean, she doesn't have her even her BF sword right now. The Jinx is sitting on a way they can outright trade, but Caitlyn just needs to focus on farming right now. And you're seeing Jao yeah, still pressure out Accelerator so many times. He's actually running from him here, uh, maybe waiting for a couple of cooldowns, but he's just trying to escape. Accelerator trying to chase him down here. They both have those Sunfire Caves. Jao well does have the boots. It's just not going to be enough to keep him at least fast enough to get away. Accelerator going to use that Burnout, going to try to chase him down here. He doesn't have Ignite, so he couldn't use it onto him, but we're saying Jay Wow with that flash still available. Yeah, I'm actually surprised he didn't try to stun him under turret. He's still at Ignite up. There's a potential chance that he could have popped that Shivana. But Morton's gonna end up coming up and trying to pick off the Shivani because her burnout's gone. <laughs> he just walks straight up to her. He's like, you know what? I'm not even gonna try Q and you. I'm gonna all attack you first with that red buff. Get the slow on top of you. Accelerator. Like he's not gonna be able to skate this one. He's gonna go down to Morton. And also that world picking up a nice little bit of a kill there. And they also got a turret right before this happened. Yep, that's the really good roam that we're talking about with the Kale. You can just push the wave up so fast and you make Nidalee was right there behind him, but she was just a little bit late because she had to clear out that wave mid. That spear just took Morden down, I want to say, below half health from one hit. I feel like they might want to build some magic in this game. <laughs> I don't know. I just get this strange feeling like some magic just could be in order. And how do you kind of counter this poke comp that, you know, Fierce Game has been able to build up? I mean, to me, they have a decent disengage with Lulu with that Glitter Lance. Well, if you look, they got all their outer turrets down already. Uh, top, mid, bottom, all gone. So really how you deal with a, with a uh, push comp like this is to force them into fighting for objectives. And the next objective is Dragon. It comes up in a minute. And you want to try to get a hard engage off on that. Oh, the flash sword of Asla as well as the uh, Q out of Hado does get the stone in Nim, but they're not able to chase them down just yet. But you can see the damage of just one spear and also the damage. Oh, what? Oh the Super Mega Death Rock, and it picks up the kill right there with the help of that Bloodthirster. And also, we're looking very, very good. Yeah, he just got outright executed. Um, and that's one of their primary forms of engage, so I'm not sure they're going to be able to go and do anything around Dragon now. Uh, he's down for 15 seconds. They're probably going to pressure up mid for a little bit and then just go down and collect the free Dragon. Right now, also, he hasn't backed in quite a while. Look at the gold that he's sitting on, 2,800 gold. You see Haydao sitting on 2,200 as well. You see the Nashers who picked up, the Sword Boots picked up. And I really want to see what is Haydao going to go for, but look at the damage. I mean, you can never forget ever about those Nidalee Spears because he's been farming up quite well. He's only sitting on 750 gold, though, to spend. Yeah, but I'm still pretty surprised that they chose to back at that time. The jungler was down. There's no way he could have came and contest. It would have been a 5v4, and what they should have done is they should have looked to engage on them when uh, when Furious Gaming tried to, to try to contest that dragon. And they should have looked for that 5v4 fight. Instead, they all go back. They had the timer on the dragon. They saw it die. And they're just not going to be able to resist report. They're just going to give up another free global objective. Oh, they get the steal! <laughs> Morden, he gets the spike with the help of j on the backside. They're chasing down that back one. Look at how little damage j was taking, pushing away three members. It's also picks up the kill next other. And now Nim goes coming for us that world. Okay, well maybe they were a little bit confident in the least smiting <laughs> ability. I failed to factor that in, you know, it's me. <laughs> but uh, oh my God. yeah, they just ended up cleaning up their entire team off of that. And that's what I was talking about, where you just want to force those dragon fights on a poke comp. You should n never engage 
outright on a dragon with a Pokemon because you're just not going to win. Uh, they have too much upfront damage. They have Annie's Initiate. They have that Jinx Ultimate. You saw that almost instantly killed that by. And then Kale is just doing massive damage. She's so rich right now. And what was so weird, about ran into three people on Fierce Gaming, but he wasn't hit. He wasn't pushed out. I mean, he just didn't care. The enemy team was like, all right, we're going to ignore you. We're going to try to finish killing this dragon and then hit your backline while our backline gets completely pushed out. And single-handedly, he shoved away 1984. He shoved away Tomex and he shoved away uh, Nidalee. Yeah, and when you split that damage and you're focusing on dragon rather than the, the team that's coming in to kill you, uh, it puts you in a really bad spot. And you basically just have to run away from this this team that has, like, you have the Jinx that's going to get excited off of one kill, and then she's going to clean your entire team up, like you saw. And also, how do you escape stuns and slows galore. I yeah. mean, it's so hard to run away from that team. Even though you have a Lulu, it's like, yeah, you get one Glitter Lance, but we have three people with slows on you. Yeah, they don't quite have that much disengage. Really, they're only disengaged is that Lulu. So they have this Pokemon, but they just don't have any way of not getting forced into fights if they're going to go for dragons like that. Do you think that's based off of the top and jungle lanes that they are the champions they chose? Or is that uh, just kind of based around their whole strategy? I think if you want to go for the Pokemon, I definitely like Renekton a lot better with the Nidalee because Renekton has a form of CC. If somebody starts coming at your Nidalee, your team, you can stun them. And also, Renekton's pretty naturally tanky, just like Shyvana, but once again, it's the CC. You need that CC to lock people down to stop them from going into your backline. And then Vi is, if you're going to make a poke comp, like, why do you have Vi in there? She's, she's a, a hard initiate. She's not really a counter engage. She's going to, like, go flying into the team. Um, so they don't really have a, 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 an, a good front line, a proper front line to, to defect, defend that Caitlyn that uh, Nidalee. And the thing also is, oh, we actually just engaged on a damn bottom lane. I actually want to punch down just a little bit. They turn it around. Hado getting very low, but Kenny Sorales, he does have the side shift. He does flash away, but Nidalee goes for the flash. They get the shutdown. And now Dude, he's been attacked. And he's trying to turn this around. This morning is coming in from the side to potentially save him. But while all this is happening, you are seeing Alslap pushing that top lane. You're seeing JWoww pushing middle a little bit more. So they trade two kills, but also well, might come out ahead still with this turret. Yeah, this is exactly what we were talking about before. They're going to use the kill in like a 4-1 split. Who's going to deal with Kale on that team once he hit, finishes that Lich Bane? Nobody on the team will be able to able to walk up to him. Even the Shivana is like, oh, well, maybe I'll like try to hold under the turret. Lost half his health instantly. <laughs> so I think that Kale is going to be a huge problem for them. All right, well, it looks like I have a little bit of a breather here. Well, maybe also it's going to put me wrong here. I actually need to close it on three people. But one thing that I was noticing about the entire game is, you know, Nim, he's... At level 6 gank from Vi is just so hard to deal with with the other team, and he really hasn't made anything happen. He ganked bottom once at level 5. And he I'm died. sorry, at level 6, and he died. Yeah, he exactly, died. and he yeah. died. And then that was kind of like the second gank we've actually seen come out of him, and it was it was scrappy. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that he went for that bot lane gank as well. I mean, they have Lulu can sort of set up a gank. I mean, you have Glitter Lance and, the, and uh, of course, the, the ultimate, uh, where you can get a little bit of CC off on it. But I figured that they would try to pressure that, that Kale. Kale is pressured up into the turret at all times, so he's pretty extended. And I think if you get a Vi ultimate on a Kale, and then Nidalee just follows it up and chases him down the lane, you could probably get a free kill. Oh, uh, Nim, he's not going to save you. It's right to the Chompers. This Q gets uh, this channel and gets kicked back into his team. He's going to use him to get over that barrier wall. Is anyone going to go up the wall? Oh, no, this is going to make a death walk, and it doesn't actually land. But Morden, with this boots mobility, he doesn't care. He gets us, though. He's going to get the kill, and this might open up Baron. He has a nice little uh, escape in the Vi, but not nice enough. Uh, now they don't have their smite, and of course they have two people in base, so I think it's going to be a free Baron for Ocelot World. Oh, but he has that blue buff. He's spamming those spears as much as possible, and you're seeing also will try to respect it. They're trying to escape it. Morden does lock that down with a smite, and they do come out with that one kill and that bear buff off the gaming made. Now, this is the real problem when you have a poke comp, and you get into this late game scenario where the other team has Baron, because they're just going to regen all the poke damage that gets done. Uh, like, the Nidalee comp is all built around getting that poke damage off, and and making to where they're too chunked out to engage on you. But they're not going to be able to do that when they have Baron buff. And they also have Kale heal on top of that. Yeah, that's going to very, very hard for them to make something happen. But we do see them respond. They do get a turn off of that. But this is kind of what you expect. The other team gets Baron and does back away. But let's take a look at items real quick. Why don't you walk us through what you see? Because right now, Ocelot World, they've been able to complete a lot of major items that unfortunately Fierce Gaming just hasn't been able to do yet. Yeah, it actually looks like that Renekton is starting to opt into that uh, Hydra. He doesn't really want to finish the Spirit Visage. Remember that he nerfed it on this patch. It used to be 20% which was absolutely amazing on all the tanks. Now, it's only 10% CDR, so I guess he's going to be like, okay, I need the uh, uh, Spectre's Cow to regen a little, little bit off the Hydra so I can melt your whole front line. Um, and then we have the Lee Sin. He's going for that tanky build. He wants to try to get any of those insect kind of engages. Or peel for his Jinx in case the Vi even does go in on him. And then, of course, that's a pretty standard Kale build. You have the Lich Bane and the Nashers too. 
pure damage, really good for split pushing, really good for just two-shotting people in any, any type of fight, whether it be team oh, fight or one. Oh, look, sorry, look at that poke up there, just onto Caitlyn, and you see how slow she's moving. She's just in such a, a tough time. She just gets sped up by Lulu, but it's really not that, uh, not enough. And right now, they're going for a five-man push. They're not trying to split push at all here. Do you think they can dive into this turret? Because that KO ultimate, with how strong JWoww is, I would imagine that's a very likely possibility. Yeah, they could absolutely engage. But the thing is, is, do they even have to? If Oslo attacks that turret one time with that Lich Fane, it's going to be so much help off of that. And of course, Genius has a lot of range as well, so... Uh, could probably get a lot of chip damage off of the turret. But if you look, Caitlyn's getting up these three turret or these three traps, and Nidalee's also going to trap up around the, the front. So the dive might be a little bit dangerous unless it's executed properly. And hey, dog, getting chunked down below half health from that spear right there. And if anything, I think Creature Fierce game, they're holding on. Hey, dog, getting hit yet again right there. He does have that blood pitch, though, so it's not like a major deal. So he's going to be able to heal this one back up. And they uh, do intend to actually just rotate away from that top side. I'm surprised he actually is going for that last whisper after the static ship in the BT rather than getting the Negatron. If you look on uh, Furious Gaming's team, they only really have one person that has a lot of armor, and that's the Shyvana. Uh, I think you might want to have the at least the Negatron just to, so you don't get chunked out of those seed, seed situations by the Nidalee. All right, well, so we're able to pick up their second dragon of the game. We have one for Furious Gaming. And with that Baron buff, with Hado with that buff, there's sir. Back to full health. And right now, look at how, how out of position the Furious Gaming is. We have three. Over towards that top side of the map, just kind of sitting there doing really nothing. He's coming around side. Trying to make a play happen, trying to get an engage. Yeah, and also, world actually spotted him on that ward over by Ray. This entire team to go do race. Like, all right, team, let's group up and get these rapes. Dude, they're, they're like third boss fights right there. They're pretty much like worse than Barry. But you were talking about look how that turret goes down, how fast it really does drop. And you saw from a couple of hits right there with that air horn just keeping me on pace. It just drops so fast. Yeah, I'm pretty sure in the next wave they'll be able to get that uh, turret. If Ocelot attacks at one time, it's probably going to go down. So it's kind of a furious game to hard. Dude, Haydal is hungry. What is he doing? He's eating <laughs> every single spear that comes at him. Delicious. <laughs> I just picture the Nunu bot thing where he consumes something, he's like, delicious. Yeah, exactly, but you see the damage that they can all do right now. That turret is not left for this world much longer as J-Watch is going to go in, fully tank it up, going to back out as well. They're going to get the turret down. Haydal trying to push in with that excitement, trying to catch someone off guard, but it looks like they're going to get this inhibitor. And then Baron buff, it's about to run out, so this is perfect timing for him. Yeah, it looks like they're all too chunked out to contest that. They don't want to look for this fight. Uh, most of the people in Ocelot world are still pretty high health, even though they got chunked by a little bit of uh, Nidalee Spear. Um, but of course, remember you got that Kale that can heal them up, uh, even if they get chunked. And speaking of that heal, I mean, also he's sitting on 276 AP as well, so it's not not a small heal at all here. But we're seeing the rest of Fierce Gaming. They're trying to push out, trying to spot them maybe back and away uh, from their own side of the jungle. But speaking of that, 2,000 gold on Oslo to spend. I actually want to see what he does pick up right uh, right next. But we do see the Talisman Ascension picked up. We do see the last whisper completed. The Spirit Massage has been done for JWoww. A yeah. lot of items. I mean, it, even Morden went for a little bit of damage with that Brutalizer. Yeah, he's just, I mean, they feel like they're in control. Um, I guess they really feel like they don't have to have that much of a tank fine at this point. The Renek is enough. Uh, there's just no way that, that Furious Gaming can fight once uh, Ocelot World's team gets into the back line. Like, they have no way of contesting that. Um, so I guess they just want to instantly kill them and chase them down and, and murder them. Like, they got the Brutalizer, that CDR, that's damage. Uh, I mean, and then he goes straight for the Void Staff on the Kale as well. I'm surprised he didn't pick up an Hourglass. It's usually something you'd see out of a Kale is an Hourglass or a Death Cabin. Oh, Halo even flashes for He's trying to get the slow object accelerator with that red buff. He does get it one more time, but he has forced the ultimate out of him and the flash. But I don't know, in the end, is that a, a good trade considering Halo was forced to use his flash as well? Yeah, I really, I really don't like trading the flash for that. I mean, it's pretty hype. Yeah, I like the play on that just because he's, he's bloodthirsty once that kill. But in a seed situation, you kind of want your flash. <laughs> Especially with those Nidalee Spears that he just seems to nom nom on every single time. But either way, he's still doing a fantastic job. 3 1 and 4 right now, 209 CS. Also, actually leading the charge in the entire game at 231 and a 2 0 3 score. I gotta give him credit. He's playing very well today with his uh, roaming that he's been doing earlier on, as well as the sieging that he's been really. He's been dancing on a line of, you know, going too far in and not too far, and he's been hitting it perfectly. And the one uh, smart thing that Ocelot World did tactically is they, they took that bottom inhib, which is the furthest inhib away from Baron. So Baron's going to come out right around the same time that inhib's coming up, and they're going to have super minions hitting that inhib when it comes up, and they're going to have to make a choice. Do we give up bottom inhib or do we contest Baron? And look at Dio. He's, oh my god, look at the damage on Tomax. Even the super mega death throw coming out, and he flashed over the wall with the stun. It does make it the 
kill, and now also Roll, they're just charging straight in the kicks. Fortune doesn't work the way they actually wanted to make it happen as the ultimate comes out of Kayla. J-Well's gonna block that one up. But the damage that also just did with that Lich Bane and that Q just shredded apart Tomex. Yeah, that was one sneaky Annie. He's like, oh yes, I made it out. We're all good. Oh my god. No. Oh, hey now, I bet you wish you had your flash now because he runs right into a trap. But with this team there, it looks like he will be able to get some backup here and survive. But then the flash comes in for Nidalee as <laughs> Nidalee just gets dropped so low. But the Ignite taken away. I'm not sure he's going to be able to skate this one. And no, he gets taken down. Drops on the backside. Now Hado's getting focused down by Fire Shimana as well as Kaden as he finally does drop here. But also, World of Tundra says they pick up another kill. Get it that went on the buy this time. So they trade a two for one, but also World, they do get the turret. They do have the Super Minions attacking the Nexus turrets already dropping very low, and they have Baron put up in 10 seconds. Yeah, I don't think anybody's gonna make it away from that double buff kill alive. Uh, she's pretty bad. The thing is, you saw how hard it chunked Lou. She just dropped down to a third life instantly, and it's like, alright, the rest of the team just attack her once or just sneeze on her, and she's gonna go down. And right now, can Furious Gaming even afford to kind of contest Baron anymore? Uh, no, and like I said, they, they took that bottom hit. They have to they have to deal with those bottom waves that are pushing in those super minions. So they can just go right up the Baron if they, if they want to do that. Like, look, Caitlyn, Italy stuck in base dealing with these waves, and they can just go straight for the Baron if they want to. But it looks like they want to control that blue buff before they do that. They know it came up. They got the timer on it before. Uh, they want to make sure Nidalee's not going to have that blue buffer when they go for the Baron, because maybe she could do a little bit of poke damage on them and chuck them out and put them in a bad situation. Morden's sticking around, but you see Ocelot coming in from the side as well. It looks like Nidalee will be able to lock that one down. I think Morden smited the small minion there, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he got the little lizard. He hates those little lizards. They are jerks. And right now, I mean, we talked about Caitlyn, but just look at 1984's items. That is not what you want to see 30 minutes in on your AD carry. When you look at his opponent, who has this action done, and the last booster, and another BF uh, sword on top. Yeah, and he still didn't build that Negatron either. He just, no fear, no fear at all. I guess he feels like he can just clean up the fight, and he just has Kale healing him up, so he's not really afraid of getting killed, and he's just life stealing most of the damage off with his BT. They always say the best defense is a good offense, and yeah. he's just going straight to offense right now, but that bottom inhibitor has respawned here. Also, World making a push towards the top side. Baron is available to be taken too, and personally, I want to see them ward up the jungle a little bit more and then just go straight for that, that Baron, blur them out of that base. Yeah, I think it gave Oslo a little bit of too much credit. I was like, oh man, they're so smart. They took that bottom inhib, like they're gonna they're gonna put him in a bad situation. It's like, no, <laughs> we're just gonna run around the jungle and like wait for the inhib to come back up. Well, they're going straight for it right now. Baron dropping very fast on health, down about 6,000 life. There is a ward in there though, and we could see Vi coming with that flash smite. He does have it available. Will he be able to pull it off? No, Morden locks it down. And we see Oslo will pick up the second Baron of the game for themselves. And Oh, Damn. yeah, he got chunked so hard, but they got the Kale heal. They'll be okay, and that Baron regen. They absolutely butchered that Baron, though, with speed. And of course, Kale is hitting like a truck right now. And it, it's a shame, because I feel like nilly has been playing this game so well. I mean, just the Spears, I, I, I've maybe seen one miss this entire game, maybe two. And it did so much damage, he kept up in lane, but it's just right now he can't really deal with how fed bottom got and how damn tanky JWoww is. Yeah, the Nidalee's been playing excellent. It's just, I don't really think that they have the proper team comp to support that, though. I think if they, even if they go for Nidalee again next game, if they get a little bit better team comp, I can see Furious Gaming putting up a lot better fight. There we go, also, well, they're not even afraid going straight for that inhibitor. We did see Haydog get hit with that, uh, that spear, but only dropped him down about a fourth of his life, which was basically instantly healed up uh, by Ocelot, not to mention that Bloodthirster. But with that inhibitor being down, it looks like they're going to move towards this top side. Uh, yeah, I mean, they still have to push that wave on top. I mean, that's not going to take long for that Jinx, though. She's, pre she's pretty fed. She does quite a bit of damage. And, of course, she has AoE with her uh, Q. Yeah, well, we do see Fierce Game, and they're trying to push out middle here. Actually, I think they have locked in onto JWoww, but... That, that's, that's a crocodile that's just not going to die. He's just so damn strong. He's going to be able to heal quite a bit. Yeah, she has a giant spot on top of that pickaxe. Yeah, I don't think that's the guy that you want to engage on. And I'm pretty surprised he didn't opt to finish that hydra. He just literally like, yeah, I got the money for pickaxe. I guess I'll build that. That Nidalee got chunked so hard. Uh, yeah, if he just, I mean, the thing is, it's a shame because if they didn't have Baron buff, and he has his move up, which they contested. They'd be able to chip a lot more and keep the damage in there. Other Super Mega Death Rocket does get blocked up by Nim, so that will be down. But that is also the ultimate being gone, which is such a key uh, component for Fierce Game. We do see engage on Shavon in the backside. He does his stun up right away, and he's all by himself. He gets taken down. But then we see Nim go in. He gets dropped already. The turret finally does fall. They're chasing him. Hey, now flashing over the wall. Gonna land the stone. And Kayla 94 is not gonna escape this one. He's gonna get kicked back in his team. He's gonna drop here. And that is another kill coming for Ocelot World. They are able to pick up the inhibitor as well off the back of that board, and he's not done just yet. He's actually being chased out and chased away as Accelerator coming back into the fight with those home guard boots. 
even with Furious Gaming, go for that last minute engage. You saw how fast Accelerator dropped when he dove into the backside of his team, and then he got stunned as well. He just couldn't move. Yeah, that Shivan is just not tanky compared to the, uh, when it comes to that, that really fed kill with the Void Staff, and that really fed Jinx that has that last whisper. Um, and of course, if either of them really start to get focused and get low, they're just going to get KL ulted anyways. I think it's. it's to me, it's like their damage is, is just kind of spiky, but it's not consistent. It's all about landing those spears over and over, and the blue buff is now gone, and this will be the last inhibitor of the game going down for Fierce Gaming. Yeah, I, with three inhibs down, I really don't see them coming back with this. Um, I'm pretty sure Oslo World is going to go back, buy, spend that cash money, and then come back to the base and run it over. Well, you're right about Misfortune. It was making it rain here because Oslo World is just so damn strong. I mean, 58.5 thousand gold to 43.9. 14,000 gold lead here. I mean, is it impossible? If you're to look at this and you're in Furious Gaming's shoes, is it possible for them to come back? Is there a possible way for them to do this? Well, I mean, there could be some storm here that could knock out the power, and uh, that could maybe do that. I mean, that's that, that's about all I can see that could happen. Froggen. <laughs> yeah, where, where, where you magic? at, Froggen? <laughs> and it's Ocelot, too. It's perfect. Oh, man. But right now, also World, they're looking strong. They're looking like they came into this. You know, we're wondering about jet lag, if there's any of that possibility or if they had time to practice, but they're looking... Look looked, very... like, looked like they had a little rough start. Remember, yeah. the Renekton gave up the, the kill to start, and Lee Sin had a couple weird exchanges, but looks like they woke up around mid-game and they just came together. They're, they're awake and they're here to play. It's like that rust has finally come off, you know, from the travel or whatnot, but right now, also, I mean, with those three ways, the Super is pushing in. They're still just farming up the jungle. I'm honestly not sure why right now anymore. I feel like they could just finish it. I mean, maybe they're waiting for the lanes to just finally shove in before they go for this. Uh, I mean, I guess, but when you have three and hips down, it doesn't take very long for those waves to push in. I mean, you have two super minions coming in on each lane. Uh, so I'm surprised they aren't just five manning in. Well, we do see JWoww push up really far right there, trying to shove them away. Do have the super minions pushing in from all different directions. In 1984, he finally has a last whisper, but he doesn't have much attack speed completed. You see him getting chipped down right there just from uh, Jinx a little bit. And all it takes is one stun, and they're grouped up. That turret just dropped extremely fast with the help of Onslaught right there with the void stuff. And that Lich, man, you see him JWoww dive into the backside of 1984. He's getting very low. He's going to get shoved out. He actually gets taken down before anything else. And there's the kill ultimate. I think the first one we've seen this game on the Haydown keeps him alive. They get four kills. They're going to get the Nexus off of this, and they're going to take the first game in this best of three. Yeah, you know it's a bad day when that crocodile is just too shot your AD carry. That looked pretty good. <laughs> Without awesome. any real damage items either. Yeah, it's all he had was that pickaxe, and that's all he needed. Oh, he's got a Doran's blade. My bad. My bad. I, yeah, he does have that. <laughs> but I mean, if you think how that game went on, it's just in the beginning, Austin World had control of bottom lane just from the get go. Yeah, to be honest, I really feel like the bottom lane won them the game. Uh, they just put so much pressure, and you even saw it. The Vi was forced to come down there. He ganked a lane that I really feel like he should have been focusing on mid more, um, and it put him in a bad situation, and he ended up dying for it. Uh, and I think that that might even cost him the game, that one play, because uh, A, they lost jungle pressure, and B, guess what? That lane that's already putting pressure and, and, is, and is getting fed and, and just pushing them out is even stronger now. <laughs> and I also like how Morden kind of had the the realization to head down towards bottom. Like he was in, he was close to the vicinity, he was there to be able to back him up. They lost one man, Hada, but they were able to turn it around, pick up another kill off of that. Yeah, the boots mobility. Awareness. Yeah, the boots of mobility definitely paid off. Um, and I really like that from early aggressive jugglers like Lee Sin, where you get those boots of mobility and you're just everywhere on the map. Mm -hmm. uh, he was, I think, at red buff when that gang started. He's like, oh, oh my god, I gotta get down there. And he just booked it and just got down there, got that counter gank and just cleaned up. He had his Nikes on. Definitely running very <laughs> fast. And you know, we can take a look at both uh, both teams. Now we have J Wow 3 1 6. The only depth he did have was uh, you know early on about level three that we pointed on earlier on, or pointed out. We do have more than five zero and six. His pressure early on wasn't the strongest, but he definitely made it uh, work when it counted. Uh, also at four zero and seven, didn't die once, had two hundred seventy seven CS the most in the game as well. And he had a death cap, a lich bane, a Nash's tooth, a void staff, sword boots, like yeah, if you like Kale Free Farm, you're, get, you're gonna have yeah. a bad time. All right. You are. And they also had uh, Hado at 5, 2, and 8. Even uh, Dio did very well, 1, 2, and 11. So not a lot of deaths across the board for the team, but a great job by Austin World. But we're gonna go to a quick little break, but when we come back, we're gonna have game.